This is the 2015 Suzuki V-Strom 1000, and it is the second generation of three generations of V-Stroms. And it's a really, really great bike, but it does have one major flaw. I'm gonna tell you guys all about it. Let's get into it. The V-Strom came out in 2002 and used the same engine from the TL1000, which was their V-Twin uh, Super Sport bike, accompanied by a fuel injection system that they came out of the GSX-R. Then in 2014, a new model came out, and you can see that it kind of has influences from the Germans because it's got a beak. And all adventure bikes these days have beaks because nothing says adventure like a Pelican. Now everything is new on this new model. The body's new, the frame's new, the motor's been upgraded from a 996cc to 1037cc. Now even though the motor is a larger displacement motor, Suzuki figured out a way to make it lighter and make more horsepower. The gearbox has also been upgraded, which includes Suzuki's clutch assist system, which makes its hydraulic clutch feel significantly lighter and also doubles as a slipper clutch. I don't know how it works, but it works. It also has two different traction control settings, which helps regulate the power by monitoring speeds of each tire. So basically, it reduces the power coming out of the engine if both wheels are not turning at the same speed. Now, traction control mode one allows for moderate wheel spin for more advanced riders. Mode two is gonna reduce that and get, get, let you barely have any wheel spin before it starts to kick in. And then you can also turn it completely off if you're going off-road or if you're doing like a track day or whatever. Now, in 2015, ABS came standard on this motorcycle, which is a great option, but they don't give you the ability to turn it off. Now for an on-road off-road bike, you want to be able to turn part of the ABS off. If you're, if you're off-road, you want to kick the back end out or something like that. I mean, it is very useful, which is why luckily the aftermarket's kind of jumped in and they've made um, ABS switches that you can plug in, you can connect to the bike so you can turn it on and off. Now the 1000cc V-twin on this bike does a great job of giving you good low-end power, which is where you want it for a dual sport bike like this, which is why they use the V-twin engine. It makes around 100 horsepower, which is plenty of horsepower for a bike that weighs 475 pounds, which is 25 pounds lighter than the BMW GS1250 and 25 pounds lighter than the, Afri than the Honda Africa Twin. Now let me explain to you guys the adventure bike hierarchy. And generally, the more you pay for it, the more you get. But amongst adventure riders, that's still debatable. So at the bottom end of the hierarchy, you have the Kawasaki KLR650, which I just have a new model come out. It's a great looking bike. But it, the MSRP is $76.99, 7700 bucks for that bike. And at the other end of the hierarchy, you've got the BMW R1250 GSA bike, which comes in you know, properly specced at $26,000. You could buy one BMW GS bike, or you could buy four KLR 650s. But on each end of the spectrum, they're both amazing, incredible bikes. I just spent two days at the BMW school uh, really learning how to ride those GS bikes. And the things that we were able to do on those things was incredible, blew my mind. I've also spent plenty of time beating up KLRs and they, you can't kill them. You just can't stop those bikes. And then somewhere in the middle of those two, almost half the price of the BMW and not quite double the price of the KLR is the V-Strom. And it is a really good in the middle bike. It's got some of the tech as the, uh, as the BMW does, and it's got a lot more tech than the, than the KLR does. And it makes a whole lot more power. It's got a whole nother extra cylinder than the KLR. And it's gonna be a much better on-road bike than the KLR will ever be. But in my opinion, I don't think it's gonna be as good off-road as the BMW is gonna be. And that kind of comes down to what my major flaw with this motorcycle is. I think when they designed it, it was more leaning towards the street with mild off-road capabilities. And the reason why I'm saying that is because the lack of ability to turn off the ABS, but also the bike doesn't seem to take a fall very well. And I know this personally because I dropped it right over there on the grass and this is what happened to it. The cast, uh, the bag hit the ground and this is a cast aluminum piece that comes up here and supports this piece. That piece broke off. I literally dropped the bike one time and now my bag's just flapping in the wind. And if you know anything about adventure bikes, you're gonna drop it. Like they will, they will drop. But like before with the ABS issue, I'm sure there's an aftermarket fix for that, which doesn't make it that big of a deal. Then you could drop the bike as many times as you want. Let's go take this thing for a test drive. And I'm gonna show you guys how to ride it. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, oh, I know how to ride it. Well, you're wrong. All right, guys, before we do the test drive, let's do the words of wisdom. Isaiah 4.8. 
The grass withers, the flowers fade, but the word of God stands forever. All right, so when I'm riding my adventure bikes or sport bikes, these are the gloves that I have to wear. This is the 507s, and these were specially made. And the best thing about them is they got big protection on the knuckles, and you could really feel every little thing through your fingers. You feel very connected to the bike. There's, 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 there's no extra flop in there. You got protection, you got feeling, you're not sacrificing nothing. Now when you're riding an adventure bike like this, you stand up, like this is how you ride it. You stand up on the bike, And when you're on the street, you sit back down. There we go. So you actually have to stop to change the traction control, which is awesome. Now the bike's got plenty of power. Now even though these tires look on-road and off-road, they're actually both pretty well. The gauges are nice and simple. You got your gear indicator right here. You got your tachometer right here, and then you got your digital speedometer right here. And then all your traction control information is right here. You also have a really nice convenient power port that you can plug your phone in or GPS into. Now what a lot of people love about these motorcycles is that it's got the V-twin motor, and it's gonna have a lot of really good grunt, big, big torque at low ends. Now the ergonomics of these motorcycles are set up that you can be comfortable in two different positions. One is sitting down, the other one is standing is standing up. That's why the handlebars are so, are so high. You want to be able to, when you're doing off-road and um, you know fire roads and stuff, or logging roads, you want to be standing up on the you want to be standing up on the bike on the pegs with your hands up and still have full control of the motorcycle, which is very different than riding like a scrambler where you're you know the whole bike's kind of flat and you're not going to be able to stand up because you're going to be bent over too much. And when you're standing up, you, you, know, you get that extra suspension uh, with your legs, and you also see what's farther up ahead, and you're much more uh, mo mobile off-road. Now this motorcycle is pretty powerful motorcycle. It is pretty quick for what it is. Initially, you might think it's more power than what you need for a bike that you're going to take off-road, but you know what, you end up using this power. Let's go do the real life zero to 60. This is how nice these gloves are. Try tying, try tying your shoes with other gloves. You need that, you need that finger. You need to be able to feel your fingers. And that's why I love them. Yeah. I mean, wow. That was a pretty quick, that was a pretty quick zero to 60. Um, I'm actually recording the audio post fact because the audio on the video was bad, but a 3.150 to 60 is incredibly fast. And the cool thing about this bike is you can take it off road, drive it in a random uh, farmer's field. There's no crop in here, so don't worry, but the bike feels good, you know, in any position. It, it, the, these adventure bikes really are the Swiss army of motorcycles, and there's tons of different adventure bikes out there for you guys to choose from. Like I said before, a lot of different price ranges, and there's one that can fit any budget and one that can fit every, every style. All right, guys, that wraps it up. We'll see you guys next time. And don't forget to subscribe. We'll see you guys later. Remember, it's not what you're riding, but where are you going?